Hi, I'm definitely not Lan, and I'll be trying to rank through Dark Souls Remastered without dying a single time. I'm going to be commentating the run, explaining what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and also giving some general tips on how to fight certain bosses and get through certain areas. Uh, now, the first thing I have to explain is why we're picking Bandit as our starting class. We're picking Bandit because the Battle Axe is a really good starting weapon. We like the stats that the Bandit starts with, and we also like the shield that it starts with because it's useful for one fight in the game. Uh, for the gift, we're going to be taking Master Key uh, because it lets us open up a shortcut early on in the game, which uh, lets us skip a lot of areas that are very dangerous to us and also saves us a lot of time. So with that out of the way, we're going to start uh, get started with the run. Speaking of the run, the run is a any percent run, which means that we will be doing only the mandatory bosses required to beat the game, uh, including one extra boss, which is Moonlight Butterfly. And I'll explain why we're killing Moonlight Butterfly once we get to that point in the game, so I don't get too far ahead of myself. Now, there's also some rules that I have in place for this run, so that we can't really cheese our way too, out of it too much. We have to rely on ourselves, don't we? Uh, the first thing, speaking of relying on ourselves, the first thing that I have in place is no summons. I'm not allowed to summon any NPCs or players to help me with certain areas in the game or bosses in the game. Uh, I am also not allowed to use any glitches, so I'm not allowed to duplicate any items, I'm not allowed to glitch through terrain or walls or doors or anything like that, and I'm not allowed to glitch out bosses so that they die in some unintended way. Um, I'm also not allowed to do any sort of quit outs uh, for any reason whatsoever, I'm not allowed, which prevents me from quitting out from, to avoid dying from fall damage, to avoid taking damage from uh, falling, or to avoid... Um, uh, enemies grouping up and beating the snot out of me by resetting their position by quitting out. Uh, an additional rule that I have in place for myself specifically is that I'm not allowed to use the uh, Duke skip. And what that means is there will be one guaranteed death in the run that we won't count. Uh, we won't be counting it because it is a death that the developers put into game, into the game, um, so that we uh, can progress further into the into the actual area where we have to fight Seath. So I won't be skipping that death, but I also won't be counting it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it regarding the rules of the run. And we can get started on the commentary of what I'm actually doing. Well, I'm working my way through Undead Asylum. This is uh, the very beginning of the game, quite obviously. And what we're doing here is we're killing all of these enemies. We're even going to kill this one extra enemy. Uh, and we're doing that to make sure that we have enough souls early on in the game to upgrade our weapon uh, by only buying materials instead of having to run and uh, get the materials elsewhere. Now for the first boss in the game, we are going to go ahead and use a two-handed jumping attack. And that way we'll hit it twice instead of just once with the plunge that we use to hit it early on in the fight. And uh, after that, we only need to hit it three more times while two-handing the Battle Axe, and he is a goner. Now, the reason we use a jump attack is because of the way the hitbox of the enemy works, is that we were going to hit it once on our way down with the jump attack itself, and then another time, uh, we we're going to hit it with the uh, actual uh, plunge attack. That way we do a lot of damage and we can quickly finish it off. This is good to do on pretty much any we uh, any class with any weapon uh, because it's just uh, it has nothing to do with the bandit class itself. Now here in Anorlando, oh, <laughs> Anorlando, I wish. Uh, here in Firelink Shrine, uh, we are going to have to pick up a few items. Uh, notably, we're going to pick up a couple of souls that were up to no good. They started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared. She said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Ann Orlando. Now, jokes aside, we also want to pick up a uh, Homeward Bones from this little hidden chest here. Homeward Bones are used to teleport back to bonfires that you rested at last. And we're also going to pick, we're also going to pick up these Lloyd's Talismans. Uh, they're used, uh, the in-game description says that they're used to prevent Estus healing in a certain area, the reason, uh, and that is that is absolutely true. Um, you can throw that at an enemy or an other uh, or another player to prevent them from being able to use their uh, Estus flask to heal themselves. But the thing that it doesn't say is that it also puts mimics to sleep, 
and we're going to use that to put a mimic to sleep so we don't have to fight it and get the item that it's guarding. Now the fire bombs we picked up will be used in Bed of Chaos to uh, kill it in a specific strategy that's a little bit safer than uh, doing it the old-fashioned way. And humanity that we just picked up is going to be used to unlock a certain shortcut in the game which will let us skip uh, two bosses and a lot of uh, running around so it's going to save us a bunch of time. Now I'm going to get on this elevator under here and I'm going to do some very quick menuing. Well, quick is debatable because I've seen speedrunners do a lot more in a lot less time as far as menuing is concerned, but I'm not very good at it yet, so I try to, let's say quick for my, uh, for my idea of quick. We're going to pick up an extra soul over here because like I said, we need to reach a certain amount of souls in the game. So we can upgrade the weapon without uh, uh, without having to actually grind any souls or materials. We're going to use the master key to unlock this shortcut. That's what I had mentioned early on in the game, uh, early on in the uh, playthrough, or rather when we were creating our character. Uh, when in, through this shortcut, we can get to Andre very early on in the game. A little bit later in the game, we can use the shortcut to get the Quaylag, uh, which will also speed up and say uh, spare us from having to go through some dangerous areas which will inevitably save our life. Now uh, these two items if you pick up either of them this dragon gets up and tries to murder you but if you pick this up uh, he won't actually react at all and that's luckily the only item we actually need from it. The other two items are the Astora Straight Sword and the Dragon Crest Shield neither of which we need for this run. The soul itself is worth 2,000, so we definitely needed to get started in the run. Now, this guy can do one of two attacks. He did the one that we like more, and that is the sweeping lightning breath. He starts from your right and goes to your left, and all you have to do is run to his left, uh, or rather to your left, and uh, you'll be able to get past him without actually having to do anything special. If he does the other straight on lightning breath, he will. Uh, you will have to dodge in order to be able to get past him. Alright, we're gonna stand still for the last soul because we don't quite have enough time on this elevator, but that's fine. Uh, we may as well stand still for less time here, then stand still for the full duration later on. Now we're going to fight a Black Knight with a Halberd here uh, because we would like to get the Black, uh, or rather the Blue Titanite chunk that it drops. I'm gonna try and backstab him off of the edge of the cliff here. Maybe he walks off. Yeah, he walks off by himself. That's wonderful. Here we go. We got the blue titanite chunk. We're going to equip the grass crest shield. Uh, the blue titanite chunk is going to be used later on in the run, and I'll, I'll explain when we get to that. But the grass crest shield is going to be useful for the entirety of the run from this point forward. Um, and uh, the reason we like it is because, other than just being a really good shield, it also increases your stamina regeneration which lets you sprint for uh, more often because the time between waiting for your stamina um, the time you spend waiting for your stamina to replenish to sprint again is diminished and also it's going to let us get an extra roll or attack in in certain fights and that'll that'll help out, help us out a lot now I picked up some items there and those items are uh, the leather armor set the uh, longbow and 16 feather arrows we're going to be using the longbow and feather arrows later on in the game the leather armor itself is not really worth uh, useful to us. We don't really need it. Now this little guy we killed because sometimes uh, he can drop two titanite chunks or uh, excuse me or just one titanite chunk and um, we want as many titanite chunks as we can get. Uh, it's not a big deal if he doesn't drop anything because uh, we have two titanite chunks that we can get guaranteed in this playthrough uh, with the route that I have set up. So we don't have to worry about this one not dropping anything for us. And uh, this guy we kill because sometimes he drops purple moss clumps, or blooming purple moss clumps, uh, both of which remove poison status effect from our character, and the blooming one removes toxic. Um, which, you know, if you want a long-lasting healthy relationship, you really want to get rid of your toxic traits. Uh, jokes aside, we want it mostly to uh, remove the poison status effect because inevitably we will get poisoned when we make our way to Quaylag. Uh, now we've used up all our souls so we can uh, 
purchase the nine titanite shards and then reinforce our battle axe to plus five. Don't get yourself killed. Don't get yourself killed, he says. Yes, that's kind of the idea. Now here we could activate, but we won't activate this bonfire. Um, why? Because we do not want to uh, teleport back to it when we use a homeward bone. Instead, we want to go back all the way to Firelink Shrine. And we'll be activating the homeward bone after we finish the gargoyles and uh, and do some, some extra stuff over here. To really quickly take care of these guys, because I really don't want them running up behind me and beating me up or stabbing me while I'm uh, fighting other enemies in this area. I killed this guy because he is uh, worth 800 souls. With a plus 5 battle axe and no levels put into a uh, uh, bandit, we can kill him with 3 hits. He drops, this is a titanite shard, guaranteed. So if you mess up and you don't have the necessary souls to buy all the titanite shards, you can get one from here. Free of charge. I personally don't need the titanite shards, so I won't be grabbing it. Uh, now this guy we can parry. The reason I try to parry him, which is relatively risky, is because, well, I've practiced it a bunch. And also because thrusting attacks are actually the easiest attack in the game to parry. Uh, why is that? Because the actual damage part of the animation of the thrust attack is very long, which lets it, uh, which makes it very easy to time your uh, your uh, parry correctly. Uh, these guys are very scary to me. I, in fact, I am more afraid of them than I am of the Bell Gargoyles boss, because once the channeler buffs them, they deal ridiculous amounts of damage, and can actually one-shot you if they do that flailing crazy attack and you get hit by all parts of it. I think those were the last ones, I didn't really count, but... Now we want to get up to this point and uh, use our 3D camera, third-person camera, to look around and wait for him to move away from the ledge. Why do we want to do that? Well, because we want to be able to kick his ass and get the thousand souls that he gives us. This will let us get a extra level once we get down to Firelink, so that's going to be very useful for us. Now this guy we want to parry as well. That did look like he stabbed me and then I parried him, which just goes to show just how easy it is to parry the, uh, whatchamacallits, the uh, thrusting attacks that enemies do. Now the reason we're going up here is to collect this one soul. Oh, excuse me, not soul, humanity. Uh, like I said earlier, we're going to need 30 humanity at a certain point in the game in order to unlock a uh, shortcut, which will save us a bunch of time and spare us from having to fight a couple of bosses that were up to no good. No, <laughs> I swear I won't, I, I, won't, I won't do the whole recital thing again, I swear. Uh, anyway, we're going to pick up an extra soul over here because it's worth a thousand souls, and that'll let us get the extra level that I was talking about a little bit earlier. And now we're ready to go and fight the Bell Gargoyles. So there's a few things to keep in mind with our current setup. Uh, when two-handing our weapon, two hits will stagger a uh, uh, any of the two gargoyles. And one hit will break the tail of a gargoyle uh, of the first one, because the second one doesn't actually have a tail. Um, now, we have to make sure that we're two-handing our weapon in order to get these uh, results. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is, in, keep in mind is that if you hit the uh, gargoyle the second time, it should stagger it, unless the gargoyle starts its dodge animation. Uh, I don't know why the game decided that would be a good idea, but if it starts its dodge animation, it won't get staggered even if it gets hit. So keep that in mind. If you see it not get staggered by the second hit, it's not because I'm lying to you, it's because the game decided that's gonna be a thing. Now another tip that I have is that you uh, once the first one lands, you want to drag it all the way over here. That way you have the most amount of time to kill it before the second gargoyle reaches you and starts actually dealing uh, damage to you or trying to damage you. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is the general tactic that I have with this setup is I want to hit the first gargoyle t excuse me, two or three times, uh, after which I want to do a tail break. Uh, the tail break gives it 
uh, makes it do a specific animation during which we can stagger it. And after that, we really should only need one, maybe two more hits to finish it off. And then we can deal with the second gargoyle. So now that all of that is said, I'm going to shut my mouth and actually get busy with uh, kicking their butts and avoiding getting my butt kicked. Okay, this is not going very well. Pretty much nothing went according to plan. Okay, the first goggle is dead. That makes it very easy to take care of the second one because he's mostly just going to breathe fire onto us. When he breathes fire, you want to go around his left side. So that didn't really work out the way I had planned, uh, because I took too long to hit him, hit the first gargoyle the second time, and uh, that didn't stagger him, which didn't let me make the tail break. And then the second one showed up and started getting angry, breathing fire. It was a uh, bit of a mess, but it worked out. You notice that we do a lot of damage because we have our weapon at plus five and we are two-handing it, which does a significant uh, chunk of damage more. So overall, it worked out, but yes, that was a little bit messy. But then again, it is uh, it is Dark Souls. What's Dark Souls if not messy when you're not perfectly prepared for something? I'm going to need to practice them a little bit more just to make them a little bit more consistent. And we're going to ring the bell, and then we're going to back go back down to... Uh, I think his name is Oswald of Kareem. And the, uh, the NPC that spawns after ringing the bell at the bottom of this tower. There he is. You can recognize him with his uh, gimp suit and the uh, gesture, which we're going to learn because it's just a funny gesture, may as well. And the reason we want to buy a purging stone from him is because, like I said, we're not doing Duke Skip, which means we are going to die uh, once in the game, guaranteed. It's a developer intended death that I won't be counting. Uh, but when we die, we have a chance of actually getting cursed by Seath and his weird attacks. So we want to remove that curse uh, debuff with that purging stone if it happens. If not, wonderful. But if it does happen, we want to have that purging stone. If you don't know, cursed uh, reduces your maximum health. Uh, now we want to kick Lotric off the edge here. He appears here after you killed the, the bell gargoyles, um, no matter what you do before that. And uh, we're going to Kick him off, and because he drops a uh, ring and five humanity, like we said, we need a bunch of humanity, so we're gonna. Well, what have Unfortunate. We want to kick him. <laughs> Are you sure about this? If you hit an enemy three times, they're gonna get real angry. Now, let's see. We can kick him, kick him once more, and kick him once more. Oh, I was getting nervous there because I don't really want to fight Lotrek without uh, the legit way. Anyway. We are going to use a homeward bone. Why is this the case? Well, uh, because we need to make the items that he uh, drops actually appear. Uh, quitting out and going back into the game would do the same effect, but like I said, I have a rule that I'm not allowed to do any quit outs. So I'm going to go ahead and use a homeward bone to achieve the same effect and get the five humanity that we talked about. Now the ring of favor and protection boosts uh, your maximum hit points, your maximum stamina, and your maximum equipment load. And removing the ring, or rather unequipping it, breaks it. But we're not going to unequip it at any point in the game. We're going to keep it. The increased uh, maximum equip load actually lets us put on the rest of our armor. While we're here, we're going to reinforce our Estus with the uh, Firekeeper Soul that we picked up in Undead Parish. And after we're done with all of that, we're going to use the Soul that we've picked up. There we go. And now we can actually put in some levels. Now we're going to increase our vitality to 15. I do that just to feel comfortable with the amount of health that I have. You don't have to do that. And you also don't have to increase your endurance. 
Uh, I do it just because I hate looking at 14, I prefer 15. Uh, but also because it's just nice to have that little bit of extra stamina and equip load. Now, uh, we're going to also increase, and this is what you could do purely, you don't have to actually touch these stats, like I said. I do that because of preference and comfort. But what we really want to do is we want to get Strength to 27 and Dexterity to 40, and after that you can use the stats on whatever the heck you want. The reason we go to 27 Strength instead of just going straight to 40 Strength is because two-handing your weapon effectively increases your strength, your character's strength. Uh, that's why certain uh, certain weapons that you don't actually meet the strength requirements for can actually be used when you're two-handing your the weapon, uh, because uh, two-handing increases uh, the maximum amount of uh, the the actual strength your character effectively has. And we're just going to quickly get rid of these leather items so that they don't bother us, and we're also going to get rid of the spider shield because we don't need that. There we go. Now, I had mentioned earlier when we went here that we are going to go to, um, we're going to use the shortcut to go to Quaylag uh, quicker than we usually could and also safer than we usually could. And that's exactly what we're going to, uh, going to go ahead and do now. There are three of these really big, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to call them, but there's these three really big guys with clubs that are going to try and hit you. Sometimes they do uh, that yell or just look at you, but other times they'll do an attack that you have to dodge. So just make sure you dodge that, otherwise you might get inflicted by Toxic. And, uh, and Toxic is actually a huge problem for us, because we don't have enough heals to survive Toxic. I'm not 100% sure of this, I think we might even have enough heals. But I don't want to spend most of my heals and um, make it harder to survive. Uh, because of toxic if I can avoid it so I just prefer to keep uh, to, just prefer to avoid all that nonsense now here you saw me randomly uh, rolling it wasn't all that random the reason I was rolling was because it's actually uh, possible to get hit by a toxic blow dart uh, from one of the NPCs that shoots those blow darts uh, we avoid that there by just spamming roll that way he can't really hit us I've never been hit while spamming rolls I have been hit uh, in other situations where I didn't spam my roll and I wasn't moving through the area quickly. So it's important to roll so we don't get toxic for the same reason we don't want to get hit by the guys in the hallway or whatever, or the cave. Now we're pathing a very specific way which is behind this branch or root or whatever you want to call it because we don't want to get those guys to aggro onto us and start attacking us uh, because they can do some shenanigans where you get hit. Um, by a boulder they they throw and then by the time you get up another one shows up and smashes you into the ground it's just not a very good time so we go the long way around it costs uh, maybe a few seconds but it keeps us very very safe uh, compared to running and trying to avoid those guys now Quaylag is a boss that's meant to be fought with a plus 10 weapon uh, by this point in the game if you went through the usual route you would have a plus 10 weapon available to you but we are fighting it with a plus five weapon, so it's going to take a uh, bit longer than it would usually take to, to take her out. But luckily she's not a particularly complicated boss, and as long as you know what exactly she does, it's relatively easy to keep avoiding all of her attacks. Now this is what I call the big barf. This is the best possible attacks she can do, because as you can see, it just lets me beat the crap out of her for a long amount of time. This is the small barf where we can punish it once. She seems to be doubling down on that, so we'll do it twice. And the most important thing in this fight is to make sure that there's no lava right behind you or near you so that you don't get hit uh, or staggered by the lava while trying to avoid her other attacks. Okay, we whiffed a little bit, that's fine. Now I'm going to path away from her because there's too much lava over there for me to want to deal with that. It's going to be so she's she will be so kind as to put more lava <laughs> in behind us, but that's okay. I feel comfortable here. Now here, instead of punishing after the next attack, I'm going to drink, and I might regret that because she did the danger hug, which is where if she hugs her uh, spider. 
head, I guess. Uh, she's about to, uh, you know, do that explosion thing. And you really don't want to get hit by that. It does more than half of your health and damage at this point in the game. Unless you block with your shield. If you notice that you can't get away from it, I suggest blocking with your shield. Uh, so, that's how you can deal with that attack. There we go. The danger hug again. The explosion lingers for a moment, so make sure that you don't walk back into it right away. Otherwise, you will uh, still get blown up. These attacks are very easy to dodge, just make sure you don't run back into them right away. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they might have a lingering effect to them as well. Oh, Wingardium Leviosa. Sorry, that just... I heard that noise and I immediately thought of that Oni and G cartoons, or Oni cartoons, or whatever it's called. The skit with uh, Harry Potter and Ron Weasley. Absolutely hilarious, and if you know if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up Oni Oni uh, cartoons, O N E Y, Harry Potter. You're almost guaranteed to get a kick out of it if you like weird humor. You don't really need to know much about Harry Potter to to enjoy it either. So, a whiff there doesn't matter. Notice that when she does this three swipe attack, I am dodging into her first two attacks. And after that, I am uh, waiting a little bit before I dodge again because she winds up her third attack for a long time. I think we should be able to finish her off here. Yes, we are. She gave us a very nice long barf at the end, which out of context like sounds like a really weird, really weird thing to say. Yes, I do say she gave us quite the quite the enjoyable long bath at the end. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, ring the bell. There we go. One time I came down here and I didn't ring the bell, so I wasted a bunch of time uh, having to go back to it. Uh, I was meant to dodge there so I don't get staggered by the fall, but I forgot to. I was trying to remove the homeward bone thing. Anyway, uh, one time I forgot to ring the actual bell after coming here. I just went straight to Seathless, like I'm going right now. Ceaseless, I should say. Um, and uh, I had to run back to ring the bell after reaching Sense Fortress because I didn't realize that I hadn't rung it. And on the way back, I died. So that that was uh, that was a very sad situation. Anyway, you probably know, if you know the game, you know that we skipped two bonfires up there. One of them uh, you were able to see, I just ran right past it, and another one is a little bit hidden. You'll see it later on in the game, if you're not familiar. Um, the reason I'm skipping those is because I would like to use a Homeward Bone to get back to Firelink Shrine from here, instead of having to actually run up through Blight Town, which takes longer and is more dangerous than running back down into uh, Blight Town. So we're saving time and we're staying safe by doing this. Now I'm on my way to fight uh, the boss called Ceaseless Discharge, which in my opinion sounds like a STD. But you know, I didn't name them. And uh, he is a gimmick boss, which means, uh, gimmick boss means that there is a developer intended way of beating the boss that is significantly easier uh, to do than beating him with regular means. Which in this case would most, most likely be using a bow and arrow and uh, 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 sorceries, I should say, because, I mean, look at him, he's oozing lava out, of, lava out of every orifice. I don't think pyromancies would really bother him. We're going to heal up to full, and the developer intended way uh, of beating him is to grab these items. You make sure you grab them, otherwise he won't aggro you, you'll have to hit him. Then we wait for him to do this attack, that's what I do personally, that's not part of the developer intended way. And after that, I literally just sprint straight to the fog gate. Uh, the reason we go there is because once you reach the fog gate, he can't actually follow you anymore at a certain point because there's some sort of cliff in the environment underneath us. And he will jump to try to reach you because you stole those items. And uh, he'll get stuck and then you can just beat him up until he dies. And if that doesn't make much sense to you the way I explained it, you're about to see it fo unfold right here. Going to jump at us. There he goes. 
I rolled into the attack. Otherwise, you could just literally stand there and he won't be able to hit you. But I tried to be fancy and it ended up messing me up. Uh, the reason I was hitting him with my fist was uh, because it doesn't matter how much damage you do. What matters is that you uh, hit him a certain number of times. And after the cinematic, we can go ahead and use our homeward bone to get out of here. That was a little bit embarrassing. I was talking about how he can't really do much, and then I got, then I jumped into his giant fist and got smacked into the face. Imagine if I had died there. That would have been very embarrassing. Anyway, we're going to use the Soul of Quelag, and then we're going to... I intended to level up, but my controller sometimes doesn't press the down button, uh, the down arrow thing, as I expected to. We're going to get strength to 27 and dump the rest of our points into dexterity. And now we're ready to go to uh, Sen's Fortress. Once we get on the elevator, I will switch out the armor that I'm wearing uh, to be the one that I just picked up uh, at Ceaseless Discharge. Which, again, st still sounds like an STD to me. And once we put all that on, we're going to get rid of the brigand armor because we don't really need it anymore. We're not going to be wearing any of that for the rest of the game. Okay, we have everything we need and nothing that we don't need. We are ready to head to Sen's Fortress. This time around, uh, we will activate the, um, the actual bonfire. The reason we are going to activate it is because after we beat Ornstein and Smo, we're going to want to head down here uh, instead of going directly to, uh, to Firelink Shrine because the bosses we're going to fight are going to be closer to here than they are to Firelink Shrine. So we want to activate that and sit at it so that we make sure that we can get to it using the Lord Vessel Teleport. Now for Sin's Fortress, my tactic of getting through the area is to literally run through the area. I don't really fight anything unless I absolutely have to. Uh, these first two, we do not have to fight. There's nothing I really need from them, and I don't need the soul that's hidden in the corner. So I just make my way through without actually fighting them. And for the rest of this, we just keep sprinting. Now you can avoid this guy by walking right next to him to the right. I'm just going to wait here for a little bit so I don't get chopped down by the pendulum and knocked off the ledge. That would not be fun. Now the snake lady... Uh, usually isn't an issue. We can roll through her second lightning bolt and we can activate this trap to kill her. Most of the time it will kill her. Sometimes she'll move in a weird way where it won't hit her. This guy gets knocked over by the boulder. It doesn't kill him, but we don't need him to die. We just need him to get out of the way. Move, snake. Get out the way. Get out the way, snake. Get out the way. Now here you want to make sure you don't get staggered or slowed down or hit or anything like that you need to run through here relatively quickly so that the boulder that uh, goes through here doesn't actually catch up to you and hit you. This by the way is a mimic. Uh, don't open it unless you feel like uh, dying. And there's no real reason to fight it because it contains a uh, lightning spear. We don't really need a lightning spear. So we're just gonna get on the elevator and get out of here. Make sure you get off the elevator very quickly because otherwise You'll get slammed into those spikes. I'm not sure if that kills you or not, but either way, you don't want to waste time having to go up the elevator again. Something seems to have died and given us an extra 500 souls. I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, this shoots three times and then you can run through safely. And uh, this, these pendulums make me a little bit nervous. I've been knocked down on them before, so I try to give it a good moment to make sure I run through at the right time. And this lady, we have to hit her at least once, otherwise, oh, excuse me, she will body block you from uh, being able to walk through. Now here, I like to play it safe and just move this way because I've been knocked down too many times on these pendulums as well. The snake ladies are barraging us with lightning. Thunderbolts and lightning are uh, very, very frightening to me. Somehow I feel the urge to say Galileo after that. Now we picked up that soul because it takes us a second longer to pick it up and keep moving. And the soul itself is worth 
worth uh, 8,000 souls, so we can't really ignore that. There's no reason not to pick that up unless you're trying to really, really huff it through here. I suggest picking it up either way because that's almost an entire level for us at this point. So it would be foolish to leave it standing there only to save a couple of seconds of time. How dare you? You paid the price. We're gonna go up here instead of directly to the boss because we want to uh, kill this um, kill this giant. The safest way to do so is to get him to do a specific attack, which is the tantrum attack, I call it. Uh, he starts stomping his feet very, very quickly, and uh, then he does a bunch of swings with his uh, arms. That's it. Uh, we want to get away from him when he does that. Uh, he gets tired and lay, like kneels down. Uh, what I do is I hit him a bunch as many times as I can with the uh, R1, and then I do heavy attacks with R2 until he dies. Uh, the reason I do the first, uh, the the regular attacks first, is because uh, there is a limited amount of time that you can stagger him for uh, before he gets up. So I use the R2s to finish him off after doing the R1s. That way he stays down the entire time and I don't have to worry about getting him to do the attack again. Uh, we kill him because he throws firebombs into the boss fight area and we don't want to have to deal with that. And we also kill him because he drops a guaranteed titanite chunk. And I had mentioned earlier in the run that we have two guaranteed titanite chunks that we get in the run. This is one of them. Now, uh, Iron Golem is a gimmick boss, but he can be killed by just beating him to death as well. We're going to try and kill him the gimmick way because it is quite a bit faster. And the idea is that you keep hitting him on the legs until he gets uh, staggered. And then once he's staggered, you have to uh, hit him some more on the legs. And that way he will fall off the edge. If you line him up properly, of course. So we gotta make sure we don't just attack him at any point in time. Gotta make sure we hit him when he's in a position where he can fall off. And make sure you don't punish him too much, because he can do all sorts of attacks, and uh, most of which will be fatal. Here we go. We staggered that leg, which means we need to hit the other leg to make him fall backwards. In our case, it's three times that we have to hit him, and then he's gone. So that's Sense Fortress with a plus five bandit with some levels in it. Now we're in Anorlando, which, I mean, look at this area. That's beautiful, even with my crappy graphics. That's awesome. Anyway, we have a bunch of souls. Uh, we're going to use all of those to level up to 26 dexterity, I believe, is how far we can get. I'm going to use the souls on my way to the bonfire. I use them after I get past that one guard, giant guard, or whatever they're called. I accidentally just used Anestis, but that's okay. Um, why do I use it after I get past him? Because if you stand in front of him for too long, he will try to beat the crap out of you. So you want to make sure you don't do that. Now I'm going to put on the longbow, some arrows. I'm also going to put on the Lloyd's Talismans. I'm going to take off a couple of things. Um, and that's because we are getting ready to get uh, kill the Mimic. Or not, not rather, excuse me, not kill the Mimic, but put it to sleep. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to make really bad jokes until it goes to sleep. And if you've been listening to me the entire time, I'm sure you're aware that I am capable of doing such things. Now, I'm going to shoot this chest because that's the Mimic. Uh, I shoot it so that it comes to us without me having to deal with these two guys. Because I only have a plus 5 weapon, and they're annoying to kill even when you have a level appropriate weapon. So I'm just going to shoot the chest to make it come to us, and then we can safely deal with the Mimic. The best case scenario is if he does a like karate kick at us, which is what he did. We step backwards just a little bit because he will use it at the maximum range that he can. And uh, after stepping backwards a little bit, we just immediately throw the Lloyd's Talisman. That way we are pretty much guaranteed to hit the Mimic. 
gonna switch to the halberd and you notice that I took off the head and hands armor that's so that we retain the fast roll animation uh, so we are not overloaded with equipment load now we have everything we need to continue forward uh, the thing with the crystal weapon uh, is uh, well, with crystal weapons in general, rather, I should say, is that they have a very low durability and they cannot be repaired. So they're meant to be this very powerful weapon, uh, but in uh, in return, you can't use them for the entirety of the game uh, unless you do specific things, which we are going to do. So we're going to use it for the rest of the game, uh, with one little exception, but you'll you'll see more about that or hear more about that once we get to that point. And uh, the way we're going to deal with the fact that the weapon is not repairable is we're going to upgrade it. And we need titanite chunks for that. That's why we grab the two guaranteed titanite chunks. And it's because we want to... Uh, excuse me. We want to make sure that we can uh, upgrade the weapon so that it doesn't break on us. Now, there's uh, there are tactics to deal with these guys. Uh, there's different ones. My tactic is to get throwing knives thrown at me until they get bored and die. I'm kidding, actually. My tactic is to stand right here where I'm standing, and then he does that. So why does he do that? Because his AI doesn't know any better. He tries to jump to reach me with a jump attack, and he can't actually do that because the way jump attacks work in this game. Sometimes they'll roll to try and do like a roll into an attack, but that doesn't work either. So, you know, silly AI doing silly things. Now, this next guy we want to shoot right in the mouth because that way he will fall over backwards. Um, I don't know if a body shot will stagger him enough to actually fall off the edge, so we are going to go ahead and do a headshot to make sure. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did as the first one with the first one here, and that's stand right where I'm standing. Uh, I'm looking for these uh, corner block things that... Uh, excuse me. These corner block things, and I'm standing right next to them. Once he gets close enough, he's going to try to do some stupid stuff and uh, end up paying the price. Again, the reason that works out that way is because their AI doesn't understand that there's no ground between us. And also, jump attacks don't actually detach you from the ground in this game. They keep tra tracing along the ground. They just kind of throw you at the enemy along the ground. Um, that's just the way the game works. That's how it's coded. So if there's no ground under you, you will end up falling down instead of doing the jump attack properly. And that ends up killing these guys. We're gonna... This was ideal. And we also got the tail cut on the plunge attack. And we just need to hit it one more time. In order for it to die, but it's being tricky. It's uh, avoiding us with its weird hitboxes and fighting on stairs with a halberd. <laughs> but yes, that was ideal. It can uh, jump and try to reach you that way. And if it falls down there, you just plunge attack it. After that, one more attack should kill it, especially if you're two-handing. If it doesn't drop down there, you fight it the regular way, and uh, that means that you will have to um, you will have to hit it three times to stagger it, and one more time to kill it. All right. Now this next enemy coming up here is the uh, giant sentry or whatever they're called. Uh, we're going to look what which attack it does that's a safe attack and by safe i mean we can just keep sprinting and it won't be able to hit us he can also do a swipe attack if he does the swipe attack make sure that you roll the end 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 part of the slash so that it doesn't actually hit you otherwise you're gonna have to probably spend a estus and deal with all that so this is much easier the reason i'm standing in this corner here is because that's where the easiest way to make him reset back to his original position that way, he won't actually come after you and try to fight you while you're trying to deal with these lightning, uh, lightning demon gremlin things. Anyway, uh, there's a few ways to deal with these guys. My way of dealing with them is this one guy that I'm looking at right now. If you hit him with a body shot, he will always fall off the edge no matter what. Uh, this next one, uh, we hit him with a running attack. Uh, the one thing that we have to keep in mind is that if we're doing a running attack and he decides to jump up into the air to hit us, we have to delay our running attack, start the animation a bit later. Uh, why? Because otherwise we're going to swing right through his legs because of his wonky, weird hitbox, 
and we're not going to be able to hit him and we're going to get punished by his attack. So we're going to run at him and see what exactly he decides to do. Uh, we're going to delay our attack if he jumps up into the air, which is what he does most of the time, by the way. Sometimes he won't, and then he's dead no matter what, because he won't be able to react in time. Let's see what happens. We do jump up. I delayed my attack. And then he's left with a very small sliver of health, and we just kick, hit him one more time, and he's gone. Now for this next one, uh, if you hit him with a body shot, he will not fall off the edge, but sometimes he will cast his uh, lightning spear, and if he casts the lightning spear, he will fall off the edge and die, because when they cast it, they take a step backwards, and he gets himself killed. If he doesn't do that, he's going to run at you like a maniac and try to hurt you. In that case, just fight him regularly. One thing to keep in mind when fighting these guys is, if you hit them at like while they're far away from you, make sure you take a few steps forward before hitting them again, or trying to hit them again, because uh, they get knocked back so far that they're no longer in your attack range. And you might see that here if he decides to attack us. So let's take a look and see what he does. He's going to do the lightning and he's going to fall off. Okay. By the way, this part is very complex. There's a lot of things to keep in mind. Um, in my no commentary runs, I will just speed through this area as quickly as I can. But here I want to really explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Because it otherwise looks like I'm doing some weird mumbo jumbo magic and just getting through this area and doing just weird stuff in general. Another weird thing that I do in my runs is uh, this rafter, for some reason, it's cursed. And sometimes when you run down it, it's bugged, not cursed. But let's say it's cursed because it's funnier. Uh, if you run down it, sometimes it will treat it as if you're falling and not actually walking down it. And when you reach that next uh, building, uh, you will take fall damage. For some reason, I don't know, it's just cursed, I swear. Um, after reaching the next building, we have to take care of two gargoyles. You can also choose to run past them. I have not had much success with that tactic, so I instead uh, just beat them up and hope for the best. Which is a little bit riskier, I will, I will admit, but I'm just not good at the tactic of running right past them. Anyway, with this rafter, what you want to do is you want to walk down a bit, a bit, roll, walk backwards, roll, walk backwards roll do a little spinny spin pretty ballerina and this should prevent you from taking any fall damage from these uh, from this weird little bug that it has going on or what we're going to do is we're going to run and uh, do a running attack on that gargoyle behind this corner and then we're going to deal with this one whichever way we know how what we're going to make sure to do is to run back into one of these uh, sides because otherwise the an orlando archery club is just going to ruin our day with a bunch of they're not even arrows, they're spears. Anyway, let's get cracking. Sometimes this guy will fall off the back. Uh, this time he did not. I'm going to walk backwards and now we have to deal with this guy whichever way we know how. Hit him once, I'm gonna roll backwards because I'm worried about getting hit by the dickheads back there. There we go. That was a little bit dicey. Like I said, it's not the safest tactic uh, in the book, but it works out for me uh, mo the vast majority of time. Now let's get ready to deal with the Anor Orlando Archery Club. Uh, the way I deal with them is I run straight up to them and I try to parry the guy on the right that we have to get past. Uh, there's one problem with that tactic and that's that sometimes this guy shooting from the or left can shoot an arrow that can hit us while we're back here. That parry didn't work out. Okay, there we go. I've been messing up a lot in this area. I'm not really a big fan of how well I did that, but if you do everything right, you shouldn't be losing any health here because you can just parry that guy properly. Anyway, it's not a big deal if you get beat up on this part because we're coming up on a bonfire that we're going to use to level up one more time before Ornstein and Smo. Uh, realistically, I don't really need that level, but what I'm doing with this bonfire is I'm restoring my health and saving more Estus Flask charges uh, for the actual boss fight that's coming up. So we want to have as much Estus as we can in case things go haywire. Which they tend to do with Ornstein and Smo. I still struggle on them because they're just a really hard boss in general. We're going to use this skip. Most people who play the game, even casually, uh, have figured this skip out. It saves a lot of time getting to Ornstein and Smo versus the uh, the other way that you can do it. So 
We're going to use that just to save the time. And reduce the risk of dying. Now for Ornstein and Smo, uh, my one tip is keep a pillar between you and Smo at all times, no matter which part of the fight you're in, and try to keep him in your line of sight. With Ornstein, just do whatever you can to kill him as quickly as possible. Do not punish him too much because Smo will catch up and beat the crap out of you, or Or Ornstein might actually just hit you with one of these crazy attacks, and that might be a problem. Now, there's multiple different things that Ornstein can do at the start of the fight, which might determine how the fight goes. Uh, if he charges at you, that is considered a good start. He is currently charging at us, you can tell from his posture. And that's a good thing because we want him to get close to us while Smo is still far away. There's a pillar right behind me. I traded blows here with him because uh, I was sure that I would stagger him because three hits will stagger if you do them quickly enough trying to get behind a pillar so that uh, Smo doesn't isn't able to just attack me for free. And this guy is going to charge at me. I'm able to punish. Okay, this I can also punish. He's almost dead. There we go. That was very good. That was a very good Ornstein and Smo fight. Now, for Super Smo, it's pretty pretty easy to to fight him. He has very predictable attacks. Uh, you just have to make sure that you don't over punish him or punish him at a bad time. Like here, if I had gone for that hit, I might have gotten beaten up by whatever he follows up with. This is what we're really, really afraid of. Uh, it does a lot of damage. It does more than half your health. It can one shot you if it hits you with both parts of the attack. So you have to make sure that you always have enough stamina to roll away from him after punishing him. Because if he does that while you're on top of him, you will have to roll to get away. And that's the most dangerous attack that he can do. Everything else, you can just block with the pillar. I'm gonna come closer to him so that he does another attack. Okay, he's doing the butt stomp. Make sure you don't run right, uh, run back in right away because it has a lingering effect on the ground. You might recall this uh, lingering effect from Quelag as well. Uh, her explosion attack also has a lingering effect like that. Okay, I'm gonna roll. Because I was very close to him, I didn't want to get hit there. I can just space that, I can run back in, punish it again. Okay, back step, not a jump up into the air. He's almost done, we just need to punch him a few more or <laughs> smack him a few more times, I guess. Ah, he backstepped that. He's very nimble for such a uh, large fellow. There we go. I'm gonna roll. And I think that's Smo dead. There we go. That's Ornstein and Smo. This was a very, very good fight. I got some good RNG, uh, and we don't have to worry too much then. I'm going to quickly use the solo Smo. Hopefully you can get off the elevator. Yes, we can. Wonderful. This was a very, very good Ornstein and Smo fight. I'm very happy with how that turned out. Now we're going to go ahead and grab the Lord Vessel. I prefer not to kill uh, Guinevere because I don't want to have to deal with the uh, Firekeeper and Anna Orlando attacking me. Oh, Chosen Undead. All right, there we go. I can see why people prefer killing her, because it just seems a lot quicker, but... I don't want to be that guy. Okay, before we uh, make our way to um, Undead Parish, we're going to level up. We gotta make sure that we don't... Uh, we have at least 22,000 souls left after leveling up. Why do we need at least 22,000 souls? Because we're going to buy the uh, Crest of Artorias from, um, what's his face, from Andre, and the which costs 20,000. And we're going to spend another 2,000 in order to buy the, um, what are they called? Um, the Weaponsmith Box? The Weaponsmith Box, I believe. Excuse me, I had a hiccup yeah. there. Um, and I think that the Weaponsmith Box... Um, I think it's called that. Let's see here. Yeah, it's the Weaponsmith box. The reason we're buying the Weaponsmith okay, box is so that we can um, upgrade our weapon and re reinforce our Crystal Halberd anywhere we are. We don't have to actually go to any sort of blacksmith or anything like that. And we're making our way over to the gate that takes us to Sif. On the way there, we'll kill all of these guys in the hopes of getting uh, purple moss clumps, because we will be going down to 
uh, Blight Town again to go to Lost Isolith. We don't really need it at all. There's nothing that we will fight, so we don't have to worry too much about our hit points. But, you know, rather not have to listen to the sizzling of poison. All right. I usually don't manage to dodge that whip attack, but this time it worked out. There's 1,000 souls back here. Uh, we don't really need them, but I like picking up extra souls. You never know. Might be the difference between getting an extra level or not. You never know. But the way the route is planned out, it doesn't really uh, doesn't really make a difference if I get 1,000 extra souls or not. But you never know, right? <laughs> All right, we use the Crest of Artorias to open that up. We're going to activate and sit at this bonfire. Uh, we don't actually need it for anything other than warping back to after we kill the Moonlight Butterfly. So why am I going to go to kill the Moonlight Butterfly? Uh, well, I'm going to go to kill it. That was a weird way of structuring that sentence. I don't know why I said it that way. We're going to go kill the <laughs> Moonlight Butterfly uh, because uh, the Divine Ember that we need is uh, behind its boss area. So I kill it to get to the Divine Ember. And why do we want the Divine Ember? Well, using the with the Divine Ember, once we give it to Andre, we can actually upgrade uh, a weapon or modify equipment. Uh, the Battle Axe plus 5 that we have, we can turn that into a Divine Weapon. Now, why do we want a Divine Weapon? Uh, we want a Divine Weapon so that we can uh, deal with the skeletons that are in the boss fight area with Nido. And those skeletons will keep respawning until you either kill Nito or kill them with a the divine weapon. So we want to take care of those guys real quick so they don't bother us while we're fighting Nito. And that'll make the fight a lot easier. There are alternative tactics that other, uh, uh, other people have come up with. I prefer doing the uh, this tactic. It's a bit slower because I do have to make a detour over here. But overall, it's not that big of a deal, and uh, I like uh, I like beating up them skeletons. Um, the reason I'm not saying anything about this fight is because the only thing I really have to say is that if she does that slow-moving attack, uh, dodge through it. Otherwise, just block it with your shield, and you should be perfectly fine. Uh, try not to use an Estus here, so you have more Estus for uh, Sif. Other than that, it's really just a waiting game because we are so strong uh, and have so much health and stuff that we don't really have to worry about this boss uh, killing us. Unless I keep tanking them just like that. We're waiting for her to go to rest like this. And it takes five hits to kill her with our current stats. Gonna wait for a little bit for stamina for two hits and there we go that's moonlight butterfly at this stage in the game early on she might be a little bit more troublesome because we don't have we wouldn't have i don't know we might not have the plus one estus we might not have as much health maybe we don't have the grass crest shield uh that's the only reason i i would see that we don't actually manage to survive that or we have some really really bad armor or stuff like that but with our current run and setup it's not a big deal we could just beat her up. So we got the Divine Ember. We're going to use a bonfire. Uh, we're not going to use a bonfire. We're going to use a Homeward Bone to get back to this bonfire, is what I was trying to say. We can get an extra level in and get the 32 Dexterity before Sif. Get that little extra bit of damage. Might make a difference. Who knows? Probably won't, but you never know. And uh, the safest way I know to get through this area where these uh, phantom ghost guys try to get you. They're not even ghosts, they just have a ring of fog, I believe. Uh, but we are going to go along the left edge and then run over that ridge. For some reason, the NPCs refuse to run over the ridge. They run around it, which gives us more time to put some distance between us and them. And you really want to avoid getting hit by them because uh, that'll just reduce and you'll have to use an Estus Flask before the Sif boss fight unless you're super confident you can avoid all damage from Sif. I'm not, so I'm just going to try and save as many Estus Flasks charges as I can possibly save. Uh, we are almost at Sif. Uh, for Sif herself, uh, my tactics include getting right up underneath her as much as possible and uh, making sure that I use a heavy attack. You can use both one-handed or two-handed heavy attacks while underneath Sif uh, in order to avoid um, 
missing her with, with your regular R1 attack, because uh, I don't lock onto Sif. I avoid locking onto Sif because um, it just makes it a little bit harder to do the fight because she's so much bigger than you. So yeah, get underneath her and use heavy attacks with the halberd. Sort of a little bit like this. That worked out. And of course, just practice to learn to recognize the attacks she does. So that you know the timing for dodging them. This is ideal. This is the best attack that she can give us, because she does two swipes. Owie, ow, ow. Aren't you supposed to be limping at this point? There we go. And one more heavy attack finishes the job. I'm sorry, Sif, but, you know, I need that Covenant of Artorias that you're dropping. And we also, I personally prefer to get this, uh, because I kill Gwyn by parrying him, so getting the Hornet Ring will increase our damage. What I also like to do is immediately put on the Covenant of Artorias because I can't count the number of times I've died jumping into four kings by forgetting uh, to put on the ring. So let's just make sure we put it on right away. I'm going to use the Soul of Sif and also the Soul of Moonlight Butterfly because it gives 1,200 souls, which is not much, but you know, the more souls the merrier. And we're going to use the large soul of a nameless soldier which is a thousand souls and let's see if we can get some extra levels let's see here we're going to increase our dexterity to 36 fortunately the extra souls that we used uh, well the last two souls that we used didn't really make a difference but the sif soul did so that's good uh, we are going to warp to firelink shrine and we're going to get ready to go down and uh, deal with the four kings. But before dealing with the four kings, we have to deal with a whole bunch of ghosts. And I absolutely hate fighting with the ghosts. Friendly reminder, sit down at this bonfire so that you get 10 Estus. And when you use your homeward bone, you end up at this bonfire instead of back in the forest with uh, at the Sif bonfire. I forget that almost every time I do this run. And it's always annoying to, to do. So this time I remembered. That's why I'm pointing it out. Anyway... Uh, what I was trying to say is I hate fighting ghosts, uh, specifically with the halberd weapon, because of the way that, excuse me, I'm just aligning myself in my seat a little bit better, um, specifically because of the way the uh, halberd attacks and the way that the ghost hitboxes work. So um, most of the time when you use your regular R1 attack on the halberd, you will miss the ghosts because they kind of float up in the air and they don't really have legs for you to hit so it just ends up with you missing the ghosts uh, pretty much any hit that you do to the ghosts will one shot them but it's really tricky to land an attack on them with the halberd so that's why i absolutely hate fighting ghosts and uh, you're going to see that the tactics that i use in order to be able to hit them they're really annoying to pull off and sometimes i get beat up real bad so I hate the ghosts more than I hate most boss fights in this uh, in this run. A uh, running attack is a really good way of, of being able to hit them. This one floats pretty low to the ground, so I'm able to kill her with a regular R1 attack. Now we're going over here because that item over there is a uh, Firekeeper Soul. Uh, using Firekeeper Souls gives you 5 humanity, and uh, we need that 5 humanity in order to be able to unlock the shortcut we had mentioned earlier in the game. There are three ghosts that show up when you run over to this. Two of them pop up here and one of them pops up behind you. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to dodge backwards. And we're going to miss the other two. I think I should be able to... There we go, that worked out. So what I did there was a backstep atta back attack. And the reason I do a backstep attack is because um, it's the... It's basically the running attack, but I don't have to actually run to be able to do it. I'll do it again up here in just a moment, and you'll be able to see exactly how it works. Uh, you do a back step by uh, pressing the dodge button without moving in any direction, and then the attack you do by just uh, mashing R1 after using the back step. We're going to step over here and then walk backwards. Why? Because, well, there you go. There's one uh, spooky ghost lady over there. I'm going to use another back step attack. Owie. 
There we go. That worked out. Another jo ghost joined the fray. We're going to run attack this one. This one we can stab. And this one we're going to backstab attack. There we go. That was very clean. Um, I, I'll be honest, I completely forgot about this one. I'm just going to use... I'm going to miss her with the heavy attack. There we go. That worked out. But yeah, it's a bit of a dance with all these ghosts here. Um, there's quite a few of them. They like to gang up on you and beat the crap out of you. Uh, that's that's why I hate the ghosts more than most boss fights in this game. One lady tries to tries to pull a sneaky on you here, so I like to stab her with extra gusto. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run uh, over to the right hand side. You see that little ledge? Uh, like I guess this is a catwalk or something. I don't know. I don't see any cats, but people call these catwalks. I don't know how that works, but. At any rate, we're going to wait for these two ghosts to get over here. Once they start floating up, we're going to run over here and wait for their heads to poke up through the ground, and then we're just going to bop them in the head. It's a game of spooky whack-a-mole. There we go. Didn't mean to kick, I meant to hit, and we got a two for one because I kicked, so totally did that intentionally. I'm going to use an Estus Flask here, just because I like being full health in this area, because you never know how many times you're going to get hit. And we're going to use the remainder of our arrows to shoot Ingward, the, uh, I don't know what his name is, Ingward the something, uh, in the face. Uh, hitting him twice makes him run up against the wall here. And then you can just finish him off by shooting him in the mouth some more. Make sure you can shoot him in the head. I'm not sure if we have enough arrows to actually kill him with body shots. Uh, so I just go for the head shots. There, it was a body shot accidentally. But I think we should still be fine. There we go. When he dies, he gives you the key to the seal. And uh, that lets us go and get rid of this water. The way to get to the seal is to go into this house, immediately take a left, and then run here. And get jump scared by some ghosts, pick up the extra 1,000 souls, and then keep running. <laughs> I am terrified of this area. If you can't tell, I absolutely despise these ghosts. They are the most annoying enemy I've ever seen in this game. Maybe the only worst thing is uh, bone wheels. Because, uh, seriously, screw screw bone wheels. Alright, we're going to move that. That's going to trigger the cinematic. We're going to skip it and use a homeward bone to get back to the Firelink bonfire. We can reach the bosses from where we were there just that moment, but I don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, the run up to the boss is that way because it's a little bit more dangerous than just going in and using a shortcut that I'm about to show you. We're just going to level up our dexterity again to get the 37. And uh, then we can head back down and deal with the four kings. Alrighty. I like to do another check to make sure that I do have the Covenant of Artorias on. Uh, that way I don't end up just going splat <laughs> instead of uh, going to the Abyss. Make our way back into the ghost town of New Londo. New Londo is also the area where we get another one of our two guaranteed Titanite chunks. And I'll be showing you that in a moment. We don't actually need to use the Transient Curse anymore, so I'm just going to remove it. Because we won't be fighting any ghosts anymore, which I am... Uh, excuse me, I had a bit of a hiccup there. Uh, which I am very, very happy about, because uh, seriously, I really hate ghosts. Not like ghosts as a concept, I'm perfect, like... I don't believe in ghosts, but in this game, I absolutely hate ghosts. <laughs> okay. He does that stab attack. You just walk around him, stab him in the back, and he should die. Sometimes they can drop Titanite chunks, and like I mentioned, we want as many Titanite chunks as we can get. Now, there is a hidden chest and a hidden enemy back here, which is going to make, make him angry real quick. He's going to do that attack as well. We're going to try and get behind him. There we go. That worked out right before I ran out of stamina. You can also drop, all of these Dark Waves can drop a chunk, uh, and they, they also have a sm very small chance to drop a Titanite Slab. They are how you farm Titanite Slabs in this game. 
So we got the guaranteed Titanite chunk, and we're ready to go and fight the uh, four kings. This guy will try to do a stab attack. We're just going <laughs> to attempt to avoid it, but fail. Usually I manage to dodge that, but it's not a big deal. Now here we have to make sure that as soon as the we're through it, we want to dodge to the right so that we don't get hit by all of the nonsense that's right outside. We're going to head to the first platform, protrusion thingy thing with the stuffy stuff. We're going to drink like an alcoholic and hop on down. This is where we usually tend to panic and check if we have the ring on. And then if we turn this way and start running, we should be heading in the direction of the first one. Okay, or I may have miscalculated a little bit, but that's okay. But these guys aren't that scary, um, but I'm going to shut up and try to focus on them, because sometimes they do stupid attacks like this. I'm hitting the spot where he died, because hitting it actually does damage to the boss health pool. Make sure you keep some stamina so that you can actually dodge out of the way of their next attack. So don't punish them too much, or they will punish you. Here I went in for the punish because I knew he would die from that one hit. So far so good. They're not hitting us with any bad RNG. Bad RNG would be if they do the um, explosion like they did earlier, like the first one did. And uh, another bad RNG attack would be if they use um, the floating thing that they shoot at you, basically. Because there's no way to really avoid it. You have to block it with your shield. It's very hard to avoid. I dodged too early for that. Okay, one more king. That will make four, and we'll be done with this. So yeah, the explosion, the blob thing that they send at you, and the grab is the worst of all of them. The reason those three attacks suck is because you're not actually hitting them and dealing damage to them. Okay, this is the blob thing that I talked about. You have to block it with your shield. Okay, and this is the grab attack. I didn't manage to dodge it. I might die here. Okay, good. I didn't die. I forget how much exactly it does. You have enough time to drink once after that attack because their post-attack animation is very long. There we go. So you saw all three of the annoying RNG attacks. If they do a bunch of those, the reason it's a problem is because uh, they spawn based on a timer. And if they do a bunch of those attacks, basically you're not able to kill the one that's already there before the next one appears. And uh, so we... It can get a little bit dicey on this fight, because we can't be sure that we won't, uh... That we'll be fighting only one at a time. So, if you notice that there's too many of them or anything like that, homer using a homeward bone to get out is a perfectly valid thing to do. That's what I do when I get a little bit overwhelmed. Now, we reached 40 dexterity here. The, all of the other points that I put, uh put into my character are into endurance. I prefer that over vitality. Uh, it's really, uh, at this point, it's really up to you. I just like having this amount of strength and dexterity because that maximizes my damage output effectively. And uh, so yeah, that's that's why I do that. <laughs> now we're going to head back to Firelink Shrine and we're going to go and talk to, uh, what's his name, Frampt? The giant lizard thing, snake guy, dude. That's sticking his head out of the ground over there. Let's see if he's asleep. He's most likely asleep. Yes, he is. Well, we're going to bonk him on the noggin. Don't worry about aggroing him. He's just going to wake up if you hit him once. He has a very large health pool. You won't be able to kill him either. 
Unless you're glitching, in which case, shame on you. How dare you. Now we have to do the conversation and the few cinematics. Um, the reason we're doing this is to place the Lord. Oh, excuse me, I'm having a really bad case of hiccups randomly. Um, we place the Lord Vessel. The reason we place the Lord Vessel is because you need to be able to access the upcoming areas. Three of the four Lord Souls that you need to collect to progress the game uh, are protected behind like golden walls. Uh, and this placing the Lord Vessel removes those golden walls. And while we're here, we're going to feed uh, Frampt the blue Titanite chunk that we got at the very beginning of the run from the uh, Black Knight with a halberd. The reason we feed this, this to him is to get the green Titanite shards, and we use those to create a uh, divine weapon for when we go to fight Nita, which is not quite yet, but we want to get that taken care of while we're here and doing all this stuff. Now, before we head into uh, into Duke's archives, we are going to upgrade our weapon once because actually I'll just show you. Um, it's getting close to the uh, breaking point on durability. Uh, we, no, I don't want to do that. I want to toggle this play. There it is. Uh, it's at 10 out of 20 durability. Uh, once it reaches 6, it starts doing way less damage and is at risk of being broken. We don't want to get to that point, so what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the weapon once. We're not going to use both chunks, only once. So we can repair it that way later on. And we are going to take another look now, and you can see that it's 20 out of 20. So this is one way to get around the fact that you can't actually repair crystal weapons, and that's to upgrade them. And we're going to head over to Anorlando, because that's how you get to Duke's archives. Remember, I didn't kill Princess Guinevere, so we're not going to get attacked by, uh, by this lady here. And that'll make it a little bit easier to actually path up to what's-his-face. It's not particularly hard to kill the lady behind us, but if I don't have to, why would I? Uh, also, we're done with uh, the four guys down there, so I'm going to switch to the Hornet Ring. Because we don't actually have any use from the Covenant of Artorias anymore. I like running through his feet. It's, uh, well, through his legs, I should say. It's not exactly necessary. I could just run through there normally, but it's there's something really funny about running through that guy's legs. Some guard you are. Anyway, before we get to Duke's archives properly, we have to take out uh, this one pig and run away from the other pig. Uh, to take out this pig, well, the first thing you do is you run away from it. We're trying to get to the entrance before uh, the pig runs us over. Or the boar, I guess I should say. And uh, the best way to deal with it is to keep hitting it with jump attacks and then rolling away immediately so you don't get hit by its follow-up. The reason we use jump attacks is because, um, well, I accidentally used a heavy attack, but it worked out. The reason you, we use jump attacks is because you won't get staggered, and if you use a regular R1 attack, you will get staggered. Uh, you'll deal damage, but you'll get staggered because it's covered in armor or whatnot. Um, and if you get staggered in front of that pig, it's going to do a lot of damage to you, most likely. So we're just going to run past the second pig. It's fairly consistent. I have not gotten hit there yet. If I just uh, run away properly, there should be no issues. Now, speaking of running away, uh, the next part, I am going to just run past all the enemies. I'm not going to fight any of them, uh, just to save time. It can be pretty dicey to do that because sometimes stuff like this can happen and you can get hit by enemies. We're going to hope that we don't get hit anymore. All right. Before continuing, I'm going to take a safety Estus Flask. And then we're going to start running this way. Uh, this next archer, you want to run to his left because if you go to his right, you won't be able to pass because he'll body block you. And that might give uh, other enemies a chance to actually catch up to you. See, so like those two, and that might actually cost you your life. So we want to avoid that happening. There's a guy with a crystal shield, crystal crystal armor, and stuff like that in here. Uh, you only have to hit, have to hit him twice uh, to kill him, and he does this weird heavy roll at you, uh, which is not exactly menacing. But you can just bop him in the face whenever he does that heavy uh, heavy roll at you. 
Um, this one you can kill with just a regular attack. The reason we're killing it is because it's, first of all, it's in our way. It's probably going to block us. But second of all, it drops a blue titanite chunk or two green titanite shards. I think it might even be able to drop two, uh, what are they called? Two blue titanite chunks instead of just one. And we want to use those in order to further upgrade our divine weapon. Now, this is the first fight with Seath the Scaleless. Uh, you are meant to die here. I'm not doing anything wrong. I am uh, supposed to die here because hitting him here, he will just regen the health that we deal to him. Let me show you actually to prove it. Just I'm not crazy. See, 43 damage. His health bar hasn't moved. We want to get hit by this because that way we won't actually get cursed. Now, you see that there's no hurt curse bar filling up. And from the first uh, first attack, if you go back in the video and take a look if you didn't notice, uh, there was a curse bar filling up. Uh, that curse bar will continue filling up even if you uh, even if you die. I don't know why that's like that. Maybe it's a bug in the game, maybe it's intended. Either way, we don't want to have that curse build up and kill us. If you remember after Gargoyles, we ended up going and buying this Purging Stone just in case I do get killed there and I end up unable to um, avoid the curse. Uh, in this scenario, I avoided the curse, but otherwise you might not be uh, that lucky. And uh, you may might end up getting cursed, which reduces your maximum health until you remove the curse. You can remove it with a purging stone. Uh, now, uh, the reason I sat down at this bonfire is because we're going to homeward bone back to it twice. Um, once is after we exit the cell. We are going to go out. This will trigger a cutscene where they turn on the music. The music makes certain enemies in this room attack you. If you use a homeward bone, it's acting as if you left the area and came back into it and the music isn't playing anymore. So that's useful to us because then we don't have to actually fight the uh, fight the enemies that are in there. I'm going to quickly take care of these two because I don't want them running up behind me and causing any sort of issues while I'm dealing with the rest of this area. So yeah, now we're headed down there to get the actual key to get out of this big room. This big, I guess this is a library prison. With a very, very impressive book to prisoner ratio. I wonder if Seath actually read all of these books. Frickin' nerd. Maybe he's like one of those uh, one of those people that really likes to collect books and have a bunch of books, but hasn't read even half of them, if any. Anyway, these enemies are the ones that I'm avoiding by turning off the music by using a homeward bone. Now we're going to go up here, and there's uh, two snake dudes and one uh, snake dudette. Um, you can avoid them and just pick up the stuff from the chest without actually fighting them. I prefer to fight them because it's, e it's just easier to... Uh, that's unfortunate. Usually I managed to backstab her. This time I did not. I'm going to try and go ahead and uh, backstab both of these guys. There we go. That's one of them. Fairly easy to backstab as long as you just keep walking around them with your shield up. There we go. Now here we get the... Uh, the key for the door that we need to use to get out of here. I'm going to use another homeward bone to go back to that bonfire up there, which means I need to kill these first two snake guys up here, which is perfectly fine. It's still a lot faster than uh, running all the way up from the bottom of the room. Hit once, hit twice, and he's gone. There we go. Now for the next part of uh, Duke's archives, we're just going to be mostly running past enemies, not actually uh, killing them. There we go. There's a dude with a bow and arrow here. We're going to try and avoid getting hit by the bow and arrow. There we go. Well, more by the arrow, not so much the bow. Now here to our left, there is a channeler. Most of the time he'll do this, uh, even if he does an, uh, a spell where he shoots at you. Uh, running straight at him and doing the running attack at a good time will... Wow. That's a new one. 
Uh, anyway, uh, running straight at him will uh, prevent you from getting hit. You'll kill him before he manages to get the attack off. I'm just going to quickly use this. Roll again in case I get hit by an arrow from this dude. And then I get hit by an arrow from this dude. Never mind. This is slightly messy. Usually I don't get hit as much here. I don't need to kill that one, but just to be safe because I'm not having the best of times, I'm going to use it like that. This guy is not angry at us yet, but this guy is apparently. Uh, do not roll right after that. Wait a little bit, otherwise you will be hit by his uh, by his spell. I need to quickly charge my health to full and roll. Because I know that there's people shooting at me with both magic and arrows. Now here you want to take a few steps regularly down it, because otherwise that arrow will hit you while you're waiting for the slide to start. Pro tips. Tips from experience in getting shot in the head by an arrow. <laughs> I do not recommend. Very poor Yelp reviews. Alright, we're getting ready to head into the Crystal Garden. And from the Crystal Garden, we're going to head to the Crystal Cave. From the Crystal Cave, we're going to go into the Crystal Room. And in the Crystal Room, we'll kill the Crystal Dragon. And then we'll take the Crystal Bonfire to Crystal Link Shrine. Am I getting carried away a little bit? Uh, but yeah, you might have noticed that as I uh, came into this area, I went to the right and dodged uh, off the platform. That's so that I can get down quickly without taking any fall damage. There's no reason to take damage if you don't have to, right? That little bit of damage won't make a big difference, but, you know, I just I like to see my health bar full. It makes me feel comfortable. There's a little hidden part here uh, where you can get an extra humanity. Uh, like we said, we need 30 humanity at a certain point in the game, which is coming up very soon, uh, where we want to have 30 humanity to open the shortcut for Lost Isolith. And uh, every bit of humanity helps, and this is one of the bits that helps. Now we're going to run past this uh, big guy, the golden crystal guy. And here we want to make sure we turn around immediately and go for the kill on these guys. So we're going to get a bunch of uh, green titanite shards and blue titanite chunks. Sometimes you only get one or the other, but either way it's really good because that'll be enough to upgrade our divine weapon all the way and make sure we have enough, uh, enough green titanite shards to actually get to plus five divine weapon which is the equivalent of a plus 10 uh, type knight, uh, plus 10 weapon I should say. We're going to kill all of these clams uh, first of all because well they're hideous to look at they're very spooky to me and uh, more importantly we're going to kill them because there is no fog gate right now and that gives them a chance to actually run in and fight you at the same time as you're fighting uh, Seath and we don't want to have to deal with that. So before we pull the next ones, we want to go, uh, the next one, which is this one to right in front of us. We want to go to this side of the room and then walk to forward until it notices us. There we go. Notice me, Senpai. Uh, the reason we do that is because the other one that's hiding behind a corner back there will pull at the same time if you don't come from that specific angle. Now what I'm trying to do is actually... I tried to do a running attack, but then I ended up settling for a uh, uh, backstep into into an attack because it's the same thing. The reason I do that is because if we do a running attack into two regular attacks, they're not able to do absolutely anything and they just die. We're going to trigger that hidden one that we were talking about just a moment ago. There we go. These guys can drop Twinkling Titanite and Purging Stones. If you ever find yourself in need of a Purging Stone, you can go and farm these guys. You can also buy Purging Stones from the... What's his face? Oswald of Kareem that we bought it from. Also, if you need Twinkling Titanite, again, these guys drop a bunch of Twinkling Titanite. Although, for the most part, just killing all the Crystal Lizards that are in your path as you play through the game should get you more than enough Twinkling Titanite to get whatever you need done, done. Okay. In this last one, we're just going to wait for our stamina, and then we're going to run in and bop it. Bop it real good. There we go. Just going to check if this one dropped anything. We don't, again, we don't really need anything that these guys drop. I just like to... I like loot, man. It makes me happy. 
and anyway, we're ready to fight uh, Seath. Uh, once you get in here, uh, there is a cinematic that triggers, uh, where he comes in and he's really angry that you found his little crystal. Uh, before we actually start fighting him, we have to destroy the crystal. Uh, the cinematic turns you around and away from the crystal, so make sure you turn back around and go deal with that crystal real quick. For the most part, killing him should be very easy. He'll usually do an attack that doesn't really bother you at all. Uh, first, when you get to him. And his second attack should be this one where he charges up his uh, big boom. You want to just run away to the corner of the room when that happens. And then as these start to break, you want to run back in and get another chunk of hits in. Okay, he's doing an attack that will not hit us. And he's almost dead, so it doesn't really matter what he's doing anymore. There we go. Seath is not particularly hard to kill. Um, it just You just need to know which attacks he's doing and what to do when he does do them. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and check if we have any souls. We don't have any souls. We're just going to wait real quick for the souls from Seath to appear. There we go, 60,000. Now let's level up a little bit more. Uh, we're going to put a bunch of points into Endurance. Uh, putting these points into Endurance actually lets us equip the gloves and still keep fast rolling. Wonderful. And we're going to warp over to uh, Undead Parish. The reason we're warping to Undead Parish is because we're going to head over... Oh, excuse me. That's completely wrong. I got this mixed up last time I was, last time I was trying to do the run as well. We're going to go to Firelink Shrine. Uh, this is just a mistake. Uh, you From Seath Bonfire, you go directly to um, the Firelink Shrine. That's a mistake, and I apologize. Um, the reason we're going there is to because we want to go down to... Uh, what's it called? To... Quaylag and uh, to unlock the shortcut for Lost Isolith and then to go to Lost Isolith and defeat the Bed of Chaos. But the reason I'm looking at my inventory is because I want to check that I have 25 uh, or rather 30 souls available. So this is 5, this is 26 and uh, 20 humanities give 2 actual humanity. So this is 4 and that means I have 30 in my inventory and I actually have one soft humanity in the upper left corner as you can see. Uh, soft humanity means that uh, you've either used an item or gained a humanity from, en from an enemy that drops humanity directly. Uh, enemies that drop humanity directly, uh, soft humanity I should say, are uh, hollows. So killing a hollow sometimes gives you one humanity. Most of the time when we get through the um, actual, uh, through Duke's archives, we will have one soft humanity. And now... Um, Hard humanity, on the other hand, is uh, humanity that you can actively like activate and use to gain humanity, such as humanity, twin humanity, and uh, firekeeper souls. Now we're headed back down into Blight Town to get to Quaylag again, and then from Quaylag we're gonna drop down. Uh, and we're gonna go to that hidden bonfire I had mentioned back when we were going to Ceaseless. Gonna check which attack they're doing. That turned out okay. This guy's just gonna yell. Ah! Yeah, I get it. Taxes, man, am I right? Or something. I don't know what he's so upset about. I don't really understand. The, the accent really throws me off, real. No. No creepy weird things by you. Okay. Again here uh, we can get hit by a toxic dart so we want to spam dodge so we don't don't get hit by it. It's not a huge deal because we will be sitting at a bonfire soon but I'd rather not have to deal with that. There we go. We never got a good look at our character here. Got a nice little smile going on. Look, they're so really, they're really, really happy. It's very nice. Again, we're going to use the um, longer way of getting around, which is to go around this branch up ahead of us. And the reason we're going that way is because we don't want to aggro these guys with the rocks. The guys with the rocks are pretty scary. can end up killing us and we really don't want to have to deal with any of that so we just take the longer way around and we get uh, we get here nice and safe okie 
dokie. We are almost at the hidden bonfire. A little pro tip about um, sprinting through the game. When you're going through long areas like this, if you manage your stamina correctly, um, you can get a lot more sprinting done. And to do that, what you do is, uh, before your stamina runs out, you stop sprinting and you let it recharge. Uh, that way you don't have to wait for it to recharge fully before you can activate it again. I'm just going to heal real quick here so that we don't die to poison. That would be very anticlimactic after everything we've done. Uh, we talk to this guy and answer with yes. Make sure you do that. Uh, otherwise, you have to kill him. He's not hard to kill, but his egg sacs explode and uh, little bugs come out of them. And those bugs are actually really, really dangerous, at least to me. They attack extremely quickly. They can uh, gap close to you very quickly with like little jumps. And they almost always stagger you when they hit you. So they're pretty dangerous. Uh, so I recommend just saying yes, I'm a servant. And... Uh, you know, calling it quits. We're gonna enter the covenant. We would have if I had pressed yes. My mistake. And after entering the covenant, I just realized I didn't use the humanities. I'll do that right now. After entering entering the covenant, now we're going to go into our inventory. I'm gonna use the firekeeper soul first. And then I'm going to use the twin humanities. And that should bring me to ten humanity. Soft humanity I should say. And we're going to use another 20 of these to get to 30 humanity. There's no real reason to, the, to use the one that we have left. Uh, so we won't. We're going to offer humanity, 30 of those. This will give us a spell and it'll say that our covenant allegiance has deepened. Here's a spell and allegiance deepened. And now we can get the heck out of here. Uh, we can head over to Lost Isolith to fight the Bed of Chaos. Um, so, the one humanity that we have left over, excuse me, I'm still struggling with those hiccups. Um, the one humanity that we have left over, we can use that to heal in case of emergency. I, so far in all of my runs, I've never ever had to use that one humanity to heal. So it's not, uh, it's not exactly uh, useful to us, but if we hadn't gotten the one soft humanity from killing the hollows up in, uh, anything with the stuffy stuff in uh, Duke's archives we would uh, we would have had to use all 30 of those humanities we would have none left so that's the only reason we have one left at this point in time alrighty now on our way to Lost Isolith uh, or rather to the Bed of Chaos specifically there are a few spots of interest uh, this is one of them you just want to make sure that you time your dodge correctly so he doesn't smack you. And then just keep sprinting. Make sure you hug the wall to the left here because there's this hole that I may or may not have fallen through. It's very unfortunate. Uh, you want to make sure that this guy doesn't catch up to you because he has hit me before and it has knocked me off the edge here. And that was not a fun time. You can imagine I don't enjoy dying to such silly things. We're not going to kill this bug. There's no real reason to. Say bug as if it's like a, like it's like, like it's a cockroach, like it's tiny. It's a giant worm, murderous. I'm grabbing these extra souls just because there's no reason not to grab them. Really, they uh, might come in handy and get us an extra level. Who knows? Now here you want to slow down. Don't sprint. That way you will get this guy to do the jump attack. And when he don't just does the jump attack, all you have to do is roll directly at him. You will go through his legs and you'll stay safe. Alrighty. Gonna make our way down here. We're not gonna go through the fog gate. The fog gate takes us to the fire sage, uh, demon fire sage boss. We don't wanna have to fight that. So instead, we are just going to go ahead and go through here. You don't have to kill any of these bugs, they can't really even attack you. There is one bug that we do want to kill, and that is the one, one of these first two ones that we see as we go in. I think it's this one. They're going to try and get away from you, but you ain't going nowhere. Uh, this one drops the Sunlight Maggot. 
The Sunlight Maggot uh, is a helmet that produces light, as you can see. Uh, we're going to use it to get through Tomb of the Giants uh, a lot more safely than we would without it. Uh, it doesn't matter whether or not you get to kill this because it just drops green titanite shards or a red titanite chunk, sometimes two. Uh, it's not a big deal if you don't uh, don't get those because at this point, after the crystal cave and the three crystal lizards we killed there, we have more than enough. In case you miss those or forget those, make sure to kill this one and get some extra shards. Uh, this guy is very scary, that's why I'm hesitating to run forward. Um, so the way I'm going to do this, there is a safer way to do this, but I don't, I don't, I don't exactly know how to do it. Uh, what I'm going to do is, as the kids say, a YOLO. I'm going to run under his right arm, and I'm just going to hope that he does a back step. Okay, this worked out. Uh, we're just going to make sure that we avoid this. Okay. At this point, we can just kind of keep running. Even if the lightning does hit us, it shouldn't be able to kill us. I'm just going to move around a little bit so it doesn't hit us but yeah that guy is very scary if he does the jump attack he could potentially one shot us because the jump attack is a little bit weird I don't know why but it can hit you up to three times in one hit and that can potentially one shot you now this uh, uh, witch of Isolith um, if you hit her with your uh, run attack you're pretty much good. You're gonna stagger her, and if you smash the R1 button, you should be able to kill her before she can do anything. Uh, you don't need to kill her, you can just run past her. She drops 5,000 souls, so I go ahead and I kill her for those souls. Might make the difference between a level or not getting a level. Now we're still fast rolling, that's good. I don't know why I checked that, because I didn't really put any new gear on. That was weird. Did you see the little shimmy or the character did? That's a little bit weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're getting ready to do the uh, uh, firebomb strat for Bed of Chaos. I'll explain it as best I can. It's not particularly complicated, but sometimes you might miss uh, the location where you need to throw the firebombs. And that can be potentially fatal. Now, we are going to step, uh, go on the sixth tile from the, core, from the edge of this circle thing. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. You want to make sure you're standing at roughly the center of the tile with your feet. You want to switch to your bow, and uh, you look for this last branch that is horizontal, and right about here is where you want to throw it, so there's like a, a little gap here between these two branches. That's where you want to throw the first firebomb. After throwing the first firebomb, you look over before the cinematic starts, and you throw your next firebomb over here. That way you're going to hit the other limb and you'll be able to uh, get to the, the center part immediately and kill it. Now wish me luck, I hate doing this part for some reason it's uh, it's very nerve wracking because I'm always afraid I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna miss the second part. Okay, go over here, throw this immediately, hopefully that hits. It does indeed hit, wonderful. That's going to hit us. I'm going to immediately drink Estus in case it does another attack that we really don't want it to do. Ah. This is the other attack we don't want it to do. Luckily, after it does that attack, uh, it won't be able to do that attack for a while, so you can just get in here and kick its butt. There we go. That was a little bit uh, tougher than it needed to be. Sometimes I'm able to get in here without getting hit by anything. Other times, stuff like this happens. So, like I said, this is a little bit nerve-wracking. If you miss the second firebomb, most of the time, you're not going to be able to hit uh, hit the second tree, a tree limb or whatever it is that you're destroying. So it can get pretty dicey. Alrighty, now we are ready to go and kill Nito. Well, Pinwheel and then Nito. And we're pretty much done with the game. I'm just going to quickly use the souls that we've picked up. Those 6,000 worth. There we go. And we're going to level up our endurance as much as we can. There we go. We have a lot of souls left over, but that's not a big deal. We're going to spend them soon enough. Now we want to warp to uh, Firelink Shrine. Uh, well, actually, first let's go to Undead Parish. And uh, I am just very quickly 
going to go ahead and put uh, the my headset to charge because it keeps beeping at me and I don't want it to die while I'm in the run. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had the uh, misfortune of my headset running out of batteries in the middle of the run. I'll prolong it by a little bit, but it's no big deal. Uh, the reason we came to Undead Parish is because we want to give Andre the, the Divine Ember and then turn the battle axe that we've been I saving I, I into the, uh, whatchamacallit, into the Divine Weapon. There we go. We are going to reinforce it as much as we can. There we go. Well, that's plenty. We can reinforce it once more. Uh, we'll do that once we turn one of the blue chunks into green titanite shards at ramped. Alrighty. Uh, if you say no uh, when he asks you for the amber, just stop talking to him, come back to him, talk to him, he'll ask you for the amber again. So it's not a big deal if you say no. There we go. Very nice. And of course, Dickhead over here is asleep again. Wake up! No, no. Let me just check something really, really quick. Okay, uh, the microphone is still picking up. Okay, and the in-game audio is still still there. I was checking that because I wasn't sure whether or not uh, whether or not you could hear the in-game audio because uh, because I had to put my uh, thingy thing to charge. Okay, now we're ready for uh, to, to go to Pinwheel. Uh, Pinwheel himself is not particularly challenging but getting to him uh, <laughs> getting to him is a different question. Uh, there are a few bone wheels that we need to take care of and uh, dealing with them is um, it's pretty dangerous. Um, I do have a tactic for that, which is a little bit uh, convoluted. Uh, but there is a quick way to get through the catacombs without using any glitches, and that's just using the, um, just just dropping from <laughs> outrageous heights, which looks very very nerve wracking, but it works out. All right, keep on running. I kill this first guy to open up the catacombs. Okay, he decided not to uh, throw a fireball at me. Usually, he tries to hit me with it. He can drop a uh, what you calls it. He can drop a uh, lantern. I think it's called a skull lantern. Uh, most of the time, he won't, but he does have a small chance to drop it. Uh, we are going to upgrade our weapon here. That's why we got the weapon smith box in order to be able to do that. We got extra green titanite shards from Frampt up there when we came back to Firelink. Okay, now we're gonna go through here and we're gonna start hopping and skipping and jumping to get to the uh, to get to Pinwheel. Really need this guy to get out of the way. Okay, that worked out magically. And we get up here and we dodge to the right. It's important to dodge again right away in case there's a skull nearby that wants to explode. This time there wasn't one, but I did lose a run to that one time. Okay, these guys uh, are still following us. Okay, one of these bone wheels will most of the time just walk away. Another one will try to actually reach you here. 
And we have him locked on, so we can just use these fire bombs. Two fire bombs should kill them. That's one. That's two. And the rest of these guys I don't really care about, but I'll just kill them. If I can, I'll kill them with fire bombs, so I don't have to deal with them. I'm out of fire bombs, so I'm going to deal with them by uh, dropping down on top of them. Oh, that's another bone wheel. Make a quick work of that. Luckily, it didn't stagger us to death. They have a tendency of doing that. But this one was very generous. But yeah, like I said, I don't have the perfect strategy for dealing with the bone wheels quite yet. But eventually, I'll work it out and it'll be a, lit, a lot more consistent. For now, this has been working out quite well for me. I haven't died there a single time. Other than the exploding, uh, uh, shrieking red skull thing that, that blows up. I, that one was a mistake that I did one time and never again. Okay, now uh, killing Pinwheel is not very hard at all. You do one running attack, one uh, regular attack, and another regular attack. He should be dead. Where is he? Hello. Boop. And he's gone. Um, we also have fire resistance armor on, so his spells don't really do much to us. Now he can drop uh, three different masks. That's Mask of the Father, Mask of the Mother, and Mask of the Child. The one we really want is Mask of the Child because it boosts stamina regeneration and it stacks with the Grass Crest Shield. So let's hope for that. Let me do my little good luck dance. Good luck dance, good luck dance. And it's the mom. Okay, that's unfortunate, but it's not a big deal. When I practice the run, I, run, I practice it without... Uh, that. I'm just going to remove these so that I can retain my fast roll. There we go. And we are ready to run into the Tomb of the Giants. Now, this guy, most of the time you can just run right past him. Sometimes you'll have to dodge. It's not a huge deal. And then there's two guys over here. Sometimes you'll have to dodge. Sometimes you don't. This time I had to dodge. There we go. Patches with the jump scare. And we are at the Tomb of the Giants bonfire. We can rest here. Very nice. Uh, actually, I let me check. We have a large soul of a nameless soldier. It's a thousand souls. That's probably not going to make a difference, but may as well use it. I'm going to level up, and I'm going to put more points into our endurance. That might let us actually wear this and still fast roll. Yes, now we can fast roll. What a difference that one endurance makes. And now we're ready to run through the super spooky part of the uh, Tomb of the Giants, and that's the actual part that goes up to Nido. I'm going to focus now, because uh, this part I don't actually know all that well. I haven't practiced it all too much, but should be fine. And we run directly ahead. Follow this. Run to the right. Dodge this. Drop down here. Keep running forward. Follow the bends. There we go. Perfect. We made it through without any problems. As you can see, this would be a lot harder to do. <laughs> it looks like a, a knight uh, fell off the map. This would be a lot harder to do without... Um, whatchamacallit? Without the, uh, without the bug light or whatever the heck you want to call it. We don't have to kill that. It drops a white titanite chunk and twinkling titanite, or maybe green titanite shards, depending on what happens. But at this point, we have our weapon ready. We don't need to use anything other than that. We don't need to upgrade it anymore. There's a guy who shoots an arrow through this. Sometimes he will shoot it down here. I heard it hit the wall, so I don't have to do any crazy maneuvers to get away from it. Uh, this is 10,000 souls. May as well pick that up while I'm here. I'm going to wait for this one to fire the spell, and then I'm going to make my way through. This one up above us might actually try to hit us. Oh, for some reason he stopped. I think it's because he destroyed the thing he was standing on, and that staggered him because he fell. And we are at Nido. There we go. Going to switch to the Divine Battle Axe, and we're going to jump in. So there's three skeletons in the room with him. Uh, we want to make sure... Okay, he's doing that attack. I didn't dodge it properly. I wasn't ready for it, to be honest. We're going to heal up the full. We're going to walk up to the skeletons to make them come at us. 
I'm still listening for the scream from Nita. That's like his... Unfortunately, I didn't dodge it again. I'm really bad at dodging that, apparently. Okay. The skeletons are dead. This was probably the worst Nito that I've ever started with, but it all worked out. Now we're ready to fight just Nito without his lackeys. And without his lackeys, he's not particularly menacing. Okay. Wow, I haven't dodged a single one. This is embarrassing. Okay. His attacks are all very slow. His recoveries are also very slow. When he kneels down like that, uh, you want to run away from him because he's going to blow up. Alternatively, you can put up your shield and block it. I prefer not to, especially now that we're pretty low on uh, Estus. Okay, he's kneeling down again. This time he's a little bit closer, so I'm going to get into the corner and then put up my shield in case I'm not far enough, but I am. Gonna wait for the attack and then I'm gonna punish. One more attack and he should be dead. Okay, he tried to kneel down, but I wasn't having any of that. I don't want to run away again, so I'm just going to bop him, and he's gone. Okay, that was Nito. That was a very, very, very messy Nito. Uh, he really spammed the scream at the beginning. Sometimes he doesn't use it a single time. Sometimes he uses it a bunch of times, like that. Uh, usually I'm able to dodge it by looking at him and, and tracking the, and knowing when to, when to dodge, but this time it really didn't work out, and that's unfortunate. But we beat him. And now we are ready to actually go to Gwyn. Let me just check if I have any souls to use. I have the 10,000 souls from this. It's very good. We are going to reinforce our weapon like we said we would to uh, make sure that it doesn't break. We're going to level up endurance as much as we can. And we are going to warp to Firelink Shrine. After warping to Firelink Shrine, we're going to wait and go uh, walk over to what's his face? Ramped, and he's going to take us to the Firelink uh, Chamber. Well, we can also just jump into the pit, and that'll also take us to the Firelink Chamber, like this. Watch me die. <laughs> that would be so fucking funny. Anyway, we made it here, and we're going to uh, offer the souls to the Lord Vessel. That'll open this big old door. I'm just going to take a quick seat, just in case, for some reason, if I need 20... Uh, Estus Blast charges. Um, honestly, uh, with the way I fight uh, Gwyn, there isn't really a way for me to use 20 Estus Flasks because uh, I'm up in his face, up in his business, and I'm trying to parry him actively. One key thing with uh, the run up to Gwyn, there's a few things for, for each of these. I have a tactic of, a tactic of avoiding getting hit. Uh, you could, of course, just kill them, but I try to not kill them. This guy will most often do that attack to close the distance and to stab you. Uh, so just wait for the last part of that and dodge. Uh, you want to run further away from this pillar because sometimes this guy goes up on the pillar and uh, drops down on you and hits you. You don't want to have to deal with that, so we're just going to quickly heal here. <sighs> All of the bad luck is catching up to me, guys. It's over. It's unfortunate. Please don't hit me again. Have mercy. I'm about to go fight your boss. Anyway. Maybe it was a good idea for me to get 20 Estus after all. Ooh. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. If I beat this now, I'm going to be very, very happy. Because I've been at this for a hot minute. This guy I can just run past. Some people choose to parry him and then move forward because he's easy to parry. Uh, I prefer not to risk the parry. I just run past him. One of them fell off the edge. That's useful. One fewer uh, enemy running at the gate. This guy, if you just run left of him, you'll be fine. This guy, if you just run right of him, you'll be fine. Make sure to turn sharply right after him, though. After getting in here, we're going to roll away fro so we don't get hit by any nonsense. And now it's time to shut up and parry.
What? I thought it was dead. But yet again, questionable attacks and hitboxes have saved my life, and I have completed the Deathless Run. The Deathless Run has been completed by Definitely Not Vlad. That's right. You know who it is. It be me. It be that guy. It be the guy who got, well, what is it? And then struggled to use it at the end of his own thing and waved weirdly at the camera. And there it is. There it is in all its glory. Blue Man Group has defeated the final boss of Dark Souls Remastered without dying a single time. Except for Sief, but we don't count that. <laughs> all right, nice. I am very happy that I managed to beat the game. Uh, without dying a single time. Uh, this is now a two hour and one minute video. But just to make sure, we're going to quit out and see what the in game time is. Ooh, why is that always so loud? That first button press. Ooh, okay. An hour, 54 minutes, and 31 seconds is how long it took me to beat uh, Dark Souls Remastered without dying a single time, except for see what we don't count that. Um, with my rules and uh, and while commentating and explaining things that I'm doing and making some minor mistakes. Oh my goodness, I've been at this for a while now and uh, this feels great. Uh, after this, I'm going to work on doing it again. Uh, first, I'm going to do it without commentating at all um, with uh, only in-game sounds. There won't be any in-game music either so that you can watch it and just uh, play some music in the background if you're into that. Uh, but yeah, this feels amazing. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from my commentary and I uh, hope you have a great day.